Today, we're going to tell you why this horse is skinny over the top, fat over the bottom, and, and fuzzy all over. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Hey, I'm Michelle. And I'm Ashley. This is Woody. Woody came to us from the SPCA from Monterey County. We love him very, very much. Um, when we adopted him, they told us that he has a condition called Cushing's disease and that it was, would be something that we need to take care of for the rest of his life. So that led us to say, what in the world is Cushing's disease and why does it sound like so many horses in America have it? So today we're going to tell you all about what Cushing's disease is, why it's an issue, and how you can manage it. I had the opportunity to work in a veterinary clinic for 12 years prior to coming to this ranch and oftentimes we would have clients come in and they would be talking about their horses. Some of them aren't even old horses, but they would ask questions such as, why is my horse still fuzzy? And it's summertime and the days are long and sunny. Why is my horse drinking a lot of extra water? Why is my horse peeing a lot? My stall is always wet. They don't normally see their horse drinking, but their stall is constantly wet. Um, they would ask us questions like, why is my horse have a super big belly, but doesn't seem to have any, uh, what we call condition or skin, uh, or skin, fat over the top line. So all of these symptoms that Michelle's clients at the vet clinic were experiencing and were asking questions about are actually symptoms that horses with Cushing's can display. So a horse that has Cushing's doesn't necessarily have all of these symptoms at once. They may have a selection of them or only a few. And if your horse only exhibits one of these symptoms, it's possible it's something else and it's not Cushing's. But if you're seeing more than one of these symptoms together, like a big fuzzy coat, like Woody still has here, now we're getting into the cooler season, so it makes sense for him to be fuzzy. But he was like, what, twice this fuzzy? Oh yeah. <laughs> Going into summertime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're trying to get all the fur off of him because they just, they can't be that fuzzy and going into summer here. I mean, it, it gets really, really hot. Um, and so that can be an issue for people in warmer climates. They've got this horse with Cushing's that's just fuzzy year round. So they might have to shave them just like we did on a video with our horse, Sam, that was out here that had Cushing's as we shaved him going into summer to keep them comfortable. The same thing with the body conditioning, if they don't have a lot of muscling up over their top line, which is this area here, but yet they have a big hay belly. One, that can mean they have worms. So you have to watch out for that, that, hey, I've got a big old belly full of worms, but my horse isn't putting on weight. But if you've wormed your horse and you're feeding them a high quality feed and they're still looking like that, you're gonna start thinking about talking to your vet about a possible Cushing's diagnosis and maybe getting them on some medication to help with that. Um, and the same thing, all the symptoms, they work together. You want to talk to your vet about what could be, you know, the possible ideas. You really don't want to self-diagnose your horse with Cushing's and just start giving him medication. <laughs> you want to make sure you're working directly with your veterinarian that can read all of the symptoms and come back with a really educated response and a good diagnosis for your horse. So Michelle, I feel like I've heard the term Cushing's before. Ashley, you're absolutely right. The word Cushing's is used a lot because Cushing's is actually the term used to describe a whole host of disease or dysfunction surrounding the pituitary gland. Um, and Cushing's disease affects a lot more than just horses. It affects humans and other animals as well. So the term Cushing's disease actually refers to the dysfunction or disease of the pituitary gland at the base of the brain that causes an excessive amount of glucocorticoids, which is a really inflammation reducing hormone. Exactly. The problem is that that hormone causes a big suppression in the horse's immune system, among other things. Yeah, in small quantities, it can be really useful because it can reduce inflammation, help the horses heal from different things, help keep inflammation down in their body. But in large amounts, we cannot just reduce all the inflammation ever. <laughs> it becomes a major immune suppressant. 
So now that we have discussed sort of the broad term of Cushing's disease and the fact that it affects both horses and humans, now we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about equine or horse specific Cushing's disease. Ashley, <laughs> what is that called? So it's called PPID, which stands for pituitary pars intermedia disorder. And the intermedia portion of that, that term refers to the portion of the brain where the issue is actually happening and where the way too many, the excessive amounts of hormones are being released. And in horses, that's more in the midsection of the brain. Whereas with people- Fun fact, with people, it's in the anterior portion. So once the process begins and that intermediate portion of the brain starts releasing the, these excessive amounts of hormones, that's what actually starts causing the formation of the tumors in and around the pituitary gland, which then it's just a snowball effect. It makes it worse and worse and worse, which is why Cushing's is actually a progressive disease, which means it can start without being very, you know, it's not a very big problem. Maybe your horse is just a little bit fuzzy one winter, no big deal. But if not treated and not managed properly through diet and other medication and things that, you know, your vet will prescribe to you, it can just get worse and worse and worse and worse until you have a horse that's displaying every single last one of the symptoms and has quite a few tumors in and around the pituitary gland, which it, it gets to a point it's not treatable and it's not fixable. So you want to try and catch things like this when it's early so that you can slow down the progression of the disease. So Ashley, if I have a horse that I suspect has Cushing's disease, what am I going to do? I'm going to call my vet. What is the vet going to do? If your horse is displaying very obvious signs of Cushing's, your vet might just go, here's some medication. Let's start treating them for Cushing's. If your vet's, you know, not quite so old school and really wants all of the facts and all of the, you know, the exact diagnosis, they're going to go to blood work and start looking for elevated levels of those hormones in the blood work and going to diagnose Cushing's through that. Does that hurt my horse? Nope. Nope, just like a shot that you would get or an injection you'd get from the doctor, except horses are like, I mean, Woody here is a little on the smaller side, but the average horse is so large, a little needle, they don't even know it's happening. You can watch our vaccination video if you want to see how much <laughs> they're just like, I don't even know anything's biting me because they're such large animals and it's a very small needle. Excellent. So the other reason that we might have the vet come out and test is for, uh, or test for this, is because horses who are 14 years and older have a 50% chance of having the beginning stages of Cushing's disease. Once a horse gets to be 20 or even 30 years old, um, the incidence is way higher. They say that even one in three horses would already have the um, development of Cushing's disease by the time they've reached that age. So <laughs> Ashley, we found out that our awesome little adopted pony here has Cushing's disease. What are we going to do to take care of him? So once you get a diagnosis from your vet, your vet's going to decide whether or not you need to start your horse on medication right away. And the medication that he's going to prescribe, if you're going to start with medication first off, is going to be Presend, which it used to be called Pergolide. Pergolide. <laughs> they changed the brand, changed the formulation a little bit. It's not super cheap, but in, you know, in retrospect, for a really big horse, you know, to get the right dosage, it's actually not that expensive, mm -hmm. and it will slow the progression of that disease, along with some diet choices, which Michelle's going to tell you about. So diet is really important. <clears throat> we have found that horses that display this PPID are actually kind of pre-diabetic. So we want to make sure that we're feeding them um, foods that especially are not super high in sugar. So we give him, in addition to grass hay, so we use a grass hay, a Timothy grass hay, because it's really a lot more balanced in the nutrition. It's not super, super sugary, and it's not super, super high in protein, uh, um, as some of your grain hays would be, or some of your alfalfa hays. So um, in addition to a Timothy grass hay to keep his belly full all the time, we give him some senior pellets. Uh, again, these are Elk Grove senior stable mix. This is mostly grass hay and a little teeny bit of alfalfa. Um, we have found that these pellets um, to give hide his percent in um, work super well at helping him to maintain weight. We have found that he actually doesn't maintain weight very well. He gets very skinny very quickly. Um, so we do need to give him the pellets to keep him going and, and feeling more healthy and young. This also has some <laughs> some good stuff for his joints, some glucosamine and um, 
chondroitin, and then also sometimes we'll add things to help with their coat as well. So if he gets too skinny, um, we'll give him some flax seed or maybe some oil on top of that. So the bucket's really awesome. You can play around with some things to help them feel better and look better, um, and then definitely get their medication down them as well. So glucosamine and chondroitin are two elements <laughs> that have to work together to um, help one, protect the joints within a horse as well as lubricate them. Basically those two things working together and they need to be in the correct dosages and amounts to work properly. So um, all I mean when I say that is that sometimes products that contain the proper amounts of gluco glucosamine and chondroitin are a little bit more expensive because it is definitely a scientific um, process and it needs to be in the right doses. So um, look for the products that are really, really high quality. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you learned a whole bunch about Cushing's and how it affects our horses like and Woody. glucocorticoids. Yes, the whole cause of the problem. So those are not the good guys in large quantities, but in small quantities. They're awesome. They're awesome. But thank you again for watching. We hope you learned something and we hope to see you back again soon. Cushing's disease is a disease that is um, used to describe it is a disease condition or skin uh, or skin Jesse <laughs> ah! <laughs> amounts of something called glucocorticoids. <laughs> oh no glucocorticoids <laughs> glucocorticoids <laughs> and excessive amounts that it creates of glucocorticoids <laughs> so um, look for the products that are really, really high quality. So, so, sorry. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Joke time with Ashley and Michelle. <laughs> what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta! <laughs> Believe it or not, that started because of a stink bug. <laughs> not sure how we got onto this track. No idea. <laughs> oh, because it wasn't a real stink bug. It was an impasta. <laughs> yeah, it didn't smell. <laughs> didn't smell. <laughs> Did not smell. We lost it now, too. It <laughs> ran away. Oh, jeez. There's a chance Woody ate it. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, we'd love to hear from you. Like and subscribe and leave us a comment about what you might like to see in future episodes. We'll see you back on the ranch. <laughs>